Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be making a compound known as cobalt chloride. Now, uh, cobalt chloride is a beautiful purple color when it's in its hydrated form, and a light sky blue color when it's not hydrated at all, and completely anhydrous. And it's going to be very useful for, uh, well, I've done a previous video on where I made cobalt metal from it, but um, also just for the simple chemical garden reaction. This is my main use for the pure cobalt chloride because what I want to do with it is when you drop it into a solution of sodium silicate, the insoluble metal silicates precipitate out and form beautiful structures. So uh, that's my goal with this uh, cobalt chloride. So to make it, we have to first find a source of cobalt. And it turns out these dead lithium ion batteries right here actually contain cobalt. One of the electrodes contains lithium cobalt oxide. So you can see it says lithium ion there, there's a bit of paint, or uh, the plastic tipped off, but it's a, this is a lithium ion battery. I just got these from the dump, and they're totally dead, and useless. And um, dead ones work best for this because they're the cheapest. So you could just go to your local dump, and go to the battery recycling spot of it, and pick up some of these batteries. So the first thing to do is rip off the outer casings, and expose the inside parts, and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. So first, I'll just use some tools, such as these pliers here, to rip those two batteries open. Okay, so I ripped off the outer casing of the first battery, and now we can simply unpeel the battery. And there's going to be a couple layers. Now one of these is going to be, copper, it has copper metal in it, but it has a plating of what I believe to be the lithium cobalt oxide. Uh, typically, the, in brand new batteries of these, uh, lithium ion batteries, there's pure lithium metal in them, but in the old batteries, it's really degraded, and I believe it is... I, I'm not totally sure how these batteries work, believe me. I've done research, but I couldn't figure out really anything. I just know that new ones have lithium metal, and old ones have, and new ones, well, all bat lithium ion batteries do contain cobalt metal. That's all I really care about. And I think I will try to extract lithium from these also. So you can see now, we can just separate these layers, and um, any of the plastic we don't want, but these uh, black layers in between, that's going to be where our uh, cobalt is plated on top of there. So um, all that stuff we want to keep, and that's what we're going to be sticking into the hydrochloric acid and dissolving. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So um, we'll get rid of all the plastic, make a pile of the innards, and I'll take apart the second battery and meet you back. Okay, so after that I added everything to there except for the plastic, except for one of the pieces of plastic, because a lot of the um, uh, metal stuff or whatever was stuck to it. So um, I just added it anyhow, so that we don't go through a huge amount of waste. Now... Now the next thing we need is some hydrochloric acid. This can be sold as muriatic acid at places such as Canadian Tire. This is where I got that. So we will need to fill it above all of our stuff and it will begin to rapidly dissolve. This will form lithium chloride and cobalt chloride. Now cobalt chloride has a nice blue to um well in acidic conditions it's a blue so dark blue solution. Um, and in neutral conditions, it is a purple solution. So we're going to see a dark blue solution form as we put the hydrochloric acid in. And lithium chloride, which will also be formed, is colorless. So this will not affect it. So we will simply take some of our hydrochloric acid and begin to add it. This is a strongly exothermic reaction and lots of gases are produced. Lots of hydrogen gas is produced. And yes. So you can see almost immediately, our solution is blue now, and a vigorous reaction is occurring. And our solution is becoming darker and darker blue, and pretty soon it's going to become almost black. So I'll let this complete and uh, meet you back. Okay, so now that almost everything is reacted, we're just left with some very solid chunks of gooey stuff in there, which is mainly copper metal, and the plastic, which didn't dissolve. And um, you can see it's a very dark, almost black, um, blue solution. Um, and this is actually our cobalt chloride, which is giving it that color. And um, so first what we have to do is scoop out as many of these larger chunks as possible. And uh, we can just put them in this bag over here. So we'll just scoop them into there, and that will be disposed of. And um, so we'll do that. Then we must filter it. This will just get rid of any of the smaller particles. And um, after filtering, I'll show you what to do next. And uh, you can see that on my gloves, it has created this blue color. It's not showing too well on the camera, but if I put on a bit more, you can definitely see the blue color of this cobalt chloride. Very cool. So I'll finish uh, scooping out the stuff and filtering it and meet you back. 
It should be also noted that cobalt-2 chloride is a known carcinogen in most animals, so most likely also humans, although it has never been tested. So you must not ingest any of this or uh, even get it on your hands. And if you do get it on your hands, wash them really well because you do not want to ingest any cobalt-2 chloride as it is carcinogenic. You must also properly dispose of the, the waste. Cobalt-2 chloride can be neutralized with aluminum foil, which will produce aluminum uh, chloride and cobalt metal. This is actually how I got cobalt metal in my other video, but this will actually get rid of the toxic cobalt-2 chloride. So, we will uh, finish the filtration, and next we must create um, an excess of a saturated solution of sodium hydroxide. And um, you can buy sodium hydroxide as a drain cleaner, um, and I got, got about 6 pounds of it at a place called Home Hardware. And I'll show you that in a moment. So we must first prepare a saturated solution of that, and then I'll meet you back after this is done filtering. Okay, so this is the uh, sodium hydroxide lye crystals, which I bought from Home Hardware, as you can see. And um, I just dissolved some into some water. And it doesn't really matter the concentration of solution. You just need to keep adding it until it looks like no more hydroxide is precipitating out. So the following reaction of what we will be doing is um, a displacement reaction where we're going to be reacting our lithium chloride and cobalt chloride with sodium hydroxide, forming sodium chloride, lithium hydroxide, and... Um, cobalt hydroxide. Now cobalt hydroxide is not soluble in water and will precipitate out as a solid. However, lithium hydroxide is very soluble in water and will stay in solution. This gives us a way to separate the two compounds. So, upon the addition, we should see a precipitant forming. And you can see the precipitant. It's all in there. It's a light pink color it looks like. Yes, it appears that we formed lots of precipitant, as you can clearly see. So I will now go ahead and mix this around to make sure everything reacts very well. And then we must uh, filter this off. And upon filtering it off, we will obtain our cobalt hydroxide and our solution of lithium hydroxide. And um, our solution of lithium hydroxide can then be used in the future to get lithium metal, which I plan on doing. This is rather interesting. It is uh, now a nice purple solution. Camera's not picking it up super well, but it's very clearly purple. Um, I'm not totally actually sure of the color of cobalt hydroxide, but perhaps it's a purple color. So I may make some more sodium hydroxide solution just to make sure we precipitated everything. But basically next we have to filter it off. Okay, so I finished uh, the filtration and you can see it's a very beautiful pink on top. This um, is the, uh, I looked it up. I'm in my Merck index, and this is the uh, color of cobalt hydroxide. So, we clearly have cobalt hydroxide, and um, so now all we need to do is re-react it with hydrochloric acid, forming more cobalt chloride. Now, this is pure, uh, free of lithium because all the lithium is in our solution below. So, we can then assume that we're going to have very pure cobalt chloride. So, I just have some more muriatic acid here, and I'll just be putting it in a separate jar after transferring these two into this jar also. And you can notice that the solution below is actually still kind of reddish, pinky colored, which means that we still have cobalt in the solution. So uh, to get rid of all the cobalt, we will need to add more sodium hydroxide, and this will in turn form more, more cobalt hydroxide, which we can add to our uh, hydrochloric acid. And um, when our solution is nice and colorless, then we can assume that there is no more cobalt in it and that it is just the lithium. And then we can recover the lithium later. So I will now take these two and put them in this jar, and meet you back. Okay, so I transferred all the remainder solution to the back there for further processing later, and with this um, the um, cobalt hydroxide, we'll now just add hydrochloric acid. And it, this will, because it's in an acidic condition, the cobalt chloride produced will become blue. So we should see a nice blue color change. And yes, just as expected, it has turned blue. We must now mix this up very well to fully make sure that all of our cobalt hydroxide reacts. So I'll meet you back when I mix this really well and everything's reacted. So now that it's all reacted, you can see it's formed this nice deep blue color again. So now that's all left to do is to simply take this and boil off all of the hydrochloric acid. This will leave us with uh, pure cobalt chloride, which will be blue because we uh, will have dehydrated it to the anhydrous form. Um, it'll be a light sky blue. But if you don't boil it down all the way, then you should start to see pink crystals forming. And this is the hydrated form of cobalt chloride. So I'll boil this down and show you exactly what it looks like after. 
Okay, so I took our solution and boiled it down, as you can see. And it is a light blue on the surface, um, but it didn't fully dry out. Now, it is fairly stuck to the bottom, and I decided that I would just add a bunch more water and reboil it down. Um, and this could be done inside, because it will just be water. And the only reason I would like to do this is because um, it would help clean up the crystals a bit, and I don't really want the anhydrous form, although it would most likely slowly hydrate as it absorbed water into the air. Um, but I really want the, um, the hydrated form of it because it's a nice um, purple color. So if we reboil it down until there's just a bit of liquid and then let it cool down, we should get nice crystals of the um, hydrated form uh, coming out of solution. So I'll just add about 250 more milliliters and then reboil it down and show you what I'm left with. Boy oh boy, is my desk ever getting uh, like filled up with all these different experiments. I'll have to clean it soon. Anyhow, so I completely boiled down our solution of cobalt 2 chloride, and um, it turned to the anhydrous form, of course, which is the nice blue. So um, to convert it back, I just simply left it outside. And as you can see, it has started to um, hydrate and turn back to the hydrated form of cobalt 2 chloride, which is that nice pink color, which we can clearly evidently see. So um, if you, I do suggest boiling down all the way. It's just the easiest way to get rid of, rid of any residual hydrochloric acid, and um, it can always be rehydrated, as clearly shown. And we do have some rather large chunks, which will be very nice with the chemical garden reaction. Um, so anyhow, I'll let this completely hydrate and meet you back when we have our final product of cobalt 2 chloride, um, which is a hydrated form. So I'll meet you back after it's been hydrated. So you should leave this in a moist area so that it can properly hydrate. Okay, so here's our final cobalt chloride. And um, the camera makes it look brown, which is weird. But it's actually a very nice uh, purple color. And... Um, I don't know why the cameras make it look kind of brown, but it is clearly purple. Anyhow, so this is uh, quite pure cobalt chloride, and we're going to be using this, of course, in the chemical garden experiment. Now, um, our yield is extremely dismal, and we barely got any because there was several of the various loss factors. But um, uh, probably a much more better way to get the cobalt chloride would simply be to dissolve those batteries in um, the hydrochloric acid and then do a displacement reaction with aluminum foil with the cobalt chloride mixed with the lithium chloride. This would produce cobalt metal, which is in a powder. You can filter this off, wash it, clean it, and then re-dissolve it into hydrochloric acid. This would probably be the most efficient way of separating the cobalt chloride from the lithium chloride. And, um, because, yeah, it took quite a bit to get, um, it done this way. Because that cobalt hydroxide, I never actually fully washed it, so it was mixed with lithium chloride, so I had to repeat the process, um, of, uh, returning it back to the hydroxide and filtering and everything. Um, so when, if you were to make the cobalt hydroxide precipitate out, just make sure to, um, wash it several times with water. And, um, make sure it's washed really, really well to get out as much lithium as possible before proceeding to the next steps. Um, to prevent redoing all of the work, which is what basically what I had to do, which is why my yield is so low. But that's okay, because we still have enough cobalt chloride here to do the chemical garden experiment. And, um, so yeah, I'll see you in a future video when we do uh, a chemical garden experiment with this cobalt chloride and various other transition metal salts which we've been preparing. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. This is basically how to make cobalt chloride. Wait, bye.